Well, good morning, everyone. What a beautiful day today, right? This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Absolutely. And we welcome everyone in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the Lord bless this service by his presence so that when service is over, you may feel encouraged, uplifted, and closer to God. So now let us center our hearts in the presence of God to worship him in the spirit and truth. Please stand for hymn number 696, America the Beautiful.
remain standing and join me in the opening prayer. Our Father, we give you thanks for the heritage and hope of our own country. As people in every place give thanks for their homelands, when as a nation we walk in your way, grant us grace to continue in your will. When as a people we fail you, correct us, gently yet without compromise. Enable those who govern us to seek the welfare not only of ourselves and of all people who share this planet with us, but also the welfare of our children and our children's children, that they may share the gifts we treasure, that they may dwell in unity and without fear from generation to generation. Speedily bring to us and to all of your people that peace which is rooted in integrity, which flowers forth as wholeness. For you, O oh God, are our peace. Amen. Now let me invite the children to come forward to have the children's time with me this morning. Hi, Ellie. <laughs> it's up to you. Come over here. Anyone who is young in art can join us. Hi, Tayan. Right now, I finally make it right. Hi, Tolsten. And, L and L Linnea. 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 Oh, boy. Now I mastered all those children's names. <laughs> so how did you have a great fourth, Tayan, Torsten? Yeah? Yes. Yeah. How about you guys? Yeah. And it sounds like uh, we had fireworks every night, three, three nights in a row. And another, another. And we celebrate like uh, crazy. Do you know what it is, Torsten? American flag, yeah, right? American flag. 
And then 4th of July or any event, I heard people saying like this, I am proud to be an American. Hmm, how true it is. But you know what? I think the better way to say is that instead of proud, we have to say, we ought to say, I am grateful to be an American, right? If you think about the wonderful things that we can enjoy in this nation, it's kind of mind-boggling. I think the same thing in church. Do you love your church? How about you guys? Do you love your church? And then I am proud of this building and the all the beautiful landscape we have. But same, in the same sense, we've got to be grateful for the body of Christ, which is you guys, who are faithful to do what the Lord has commanded us to do, reaching out people in Jesus' name, teaching love of God, that reaching out people, those who are marginalized in the name of Jesus Christ, to do what? To make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And you know, you know, sometimes we take church for granted. You know what I'm talking about? We just expect church is available 24 seven, but that is not true without faithful people. So I wanna share my gratitude with you because you are the church and I am grateful. Taeyeon, aren't you grateful for BBS you enjoyed? Right, the same thing. So we are grateful for our church. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you for coming up. Let us greet one another as a sign of God's peace here to stay. standing for the gospel reading which is John chapter 19 verses 25 through 27 near the cross of Jesus stood his mother his mother's sister Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene when Jesus saw his mother there <clears throat> and the disciple whom he loves standing nearby 
He said to his mother, Dear woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, Here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. This is the word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. Thank you, Cindy. In August 23rd this year, I will have been living in the United States for 24 years, which is 44% of my life. As a person who knows both cultures, Korean culture and American culture, I can see how much American culture has been molded by Christianity, its core values, and the teaching of the church that she has preached for centuries. And those who proudly claim themselves as atheists and agnostics in this nation really don't know how much their philosophy or morality was impacted, imprinted by the culture which was shaped by Christianity because they were born and taught in this culture. For the last 2,000 years of history, despite of some struggles and mistakes, the church, the ecclesia, of Christ followers has been the main vehicle to build Western civilization and culture wherever the gospel of Jesus Christ is preached. And that's why a local church like Mequon United Methodist Church matters. And local church like Mequon United Methodist Church is the birthplace the birthplace for disciples of Jesus Christ who take Christ has commanded seriously with a joyful obedience, knowing and experiencing his grace and love in beyond their lives. Again, that's why a local church like Mequon United Methodist Church does matter. Now, some of you may ask, are there better cultures? You'd better believe there are. Let me put it this way. The culture that puts some consideration and thoughtfulness for the poor and the marginalized in their legislation and policy is better culture than the one that does not. Are you with me? Remind you, not every culture does that. I know that some countries went backward in that area, even though they received Christianity earlier than others, but that was not because of Christianity, Christianity teaching, but because they made Christianity as state religion, or they lost their Christian core values through some ideology replacing Christianity. But the United States has kept the separation of church and state all along the way, which means people voluntarily choose to become Christians, not by government decision. That means you chose to come to church this morning to worship God and praise God with fellow Christians. You know what? 
That is the power. That is the power of Christianity in the United States of America. Having said that, we have to admit that the power is getting weaker and weaker, isn't it? Have you noticed that in America, some people are frantically doing their best to downplay or even dismiss their Christian heritage or tradition that is related to the success of the United States? Have you noticed that? And now, nine out of 10 churches in America are declining or growing at a pace that is slower than that of their communities. Many Christians show that they don't appreciate their faith anymore by their calendars and their checkbooks. Two thirds of United Methodist members are too rich or have too much that they say, who is the Lord on any given Sunday? That's why we have so many empty pews on Sunday morning. Simply stated, we, churches, are losing the power and ground in our own backyard by our choice. David Aikman served as a journalist for Time magazine from 1971 to 1994. In his role as a Time correspondent, he visited China several times and even lived in China for two years as Times Bureau Chief. He returned to China in 2002 to gather the information he needed to complete his book entitled, Jesus in Beijing, How Christianity is Transforming China and Changing the Global Balance of Power. In that book, David Ekman records a statement from a Chinese social scientist indoctrinated in my, 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 Maoism, Maoism, I have to say, Maoism regarding his and his colleagues' conclusions on their research to account for success of the West, and I quote. This. One of the things we were asked to look into was what accounted for the success, in fact, the preeminence of the West all over the world. We studied everything we could from the historical, political, economic, and cultural perspective. At first, we thought it was because you had more powerful guns than we had. Then, we thought it was because you had the best political system. Next, we focus on your economic system. But in the last 20 years, we have realized that the heart of your culture is your religion, Christianity. This is why the West has been so powerful. The Christian moral foundation of social and cultural life was what made possible the emergence of capitalism and then the successful transition to democratic politics. We don't have any doubt about this. Unquote. 
Friends, this was not coming from some ultra-conservative think tank. This was a scholar from China's premier academic research institute, the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences in Beijing in 2002. Brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, for the last 2,000 years of history, for the last 2,000 years of history, despite of mistakes and flaws, church has been the main vehicle to build civilization and culture wherever the gospel of Jesus Christ is preached. And as a body of Christ, as a body of Christ, we not only are to be proud of what the church has done in human history, but we ought to be grateful our local churches, like Mequon United Methodist Church, which has faithfully done its ministry by teaching, by loving, serving, giving, I mean sacrificial giving, as an ark of salvation in this community and beyond. You know, every Christian has three homes. First, your personal home. Second, your church home. Third, the heavenly home. At our church home, Jesus' followers do their ministry and their mission based on their relationship to God and one another. And the gospel reading this morning tells so poignantly what our relationship to one another in Christ is all about. On the cross, Jesus expressed concern for his mother. In the midst of his struggling with pain, his eyes fell upon his mom, whose soul was pierced and broken into millions of pieces. With his eyes still fixed on his mother, Jesus spoke to her, Woman, here's your son. And then to John, he said, here is your mother. Jesus, in these words, was thinking about his mother and her sorrows and her needs. And he wanted his mother cared for since he would not be able to care for her himself. And John, his disciple, was given this responsibility. And, and now John is Mary's son, and Mary is John's mother, and they are to love and care for each other. But isn't it strange? Isn't it strange that Jesus chose John for this task? I mean, why not one of his own biological half-brothers? Mary and Joseph had four sons and at least two daughters. Why not ask some of them to take care of Mary? Why John? Perhaps the main reason Jesus did this is because prior to the resurrection, his half-siblings had not believed who Jesus claimed to be. So Jesus put his mother in the care of one who would not only care for her, but also one who loved Jesus, and believed in him as his Lord and Savior. 
Now, may I tell you that the deepest relationship of life is not biological? The deepest relationship of life is spiritual relationship. Jesus was raised under the same roof with several half siblings, but he had a much closer relationship, much closer bond with John and other disciples than his own siblings because of their spiritual relationships. And that is one of the marvelous things about the family of God, church, family. Roots deepen quickly within the ranks of the faithful, don't they? In Christ, John and Mary have a new relationship. John has his arm around Mary's shoulders as her son. And Mary is leaning on John for strength. Friends, that is, that is the picture of community, of love and care we have been called to build here at McGuan United Methodist Church. And this morning, Jesus says, here is your sister in me. Here is your brother in me. So why don't you turn to the person next to you and say that? You're my brother in Christ. Or you're my sister in Christ. Don't be shy. <laughs> A husband and also brother. <laughs> say it. You're my sister, and you're my brother in Christ. Now let me invite our lay leader, Glenn Van Fossen, to share, where's Glenn? To share his story, his love story of his church called McGuan United Methodist Church. Morning. Thirty-nine. <clears throat> excuse me. Thirty-nine years ago, Jan and I and our youngest son Greg moved from Western New York to Mequon. Now we didn't have to go to uh, the internet to find a church. We had been Methodist for a long, long time, so we looked in the phone pages and found Mequon United Methodist Church. And I can tell you, from day one, when we walked in, we were welcomed with open arms. Uh, there's too many people to mention, and I would forget somebody, so I won't. But not only did they welcome us into the church, but they welcomed us into their homes shortly after we got here, and then invited other church members to come so we could meet them. Secondly, United, Mequon United Methodist Church is a fertile ground to grow our faith. We have excellent Bible study classes, and I think Pastor Sue is going to start another one this, this fall. Our prayer breakfast is one of, one of my favorites. We always, uh, we always talk about the joys and concerns of the church. We always learn a bit more about the Bible and solve a lot of the world's problems. I've had the opportunity to uh, teach and learn from scores of high school students over the last 25 or 30 years. I'm not certain how many. But uh, I, I have great faith in our church and great faith in our country when I see these, and I'm glad to see Philip and Ellie and Cole and uh, Haley in church this morning. They're fantastic examples. I'm in awe, I'm in absolute awe of so many people in this church because they give so unselfishly because of their faith to serve other people. And they do this day after day after day. And again, I'm not going to mention any people because I'll miss so many. But we have a lot. I think growing our faith is a journey. It's a long journey, at least in my case. It, it takes time and it takes every day. 
And lastly, MUMC is my second family. I tell people all over the country as I travel that I have two families, blessed with a wonderful family of my own and blessed with a wonderful church family. We pray together, we cry together, we socialize and have fun together. As a matter of fact, Ginger, we're going to miss you at the Packer parties, the flag-waving cheerleader when the Packers score a touchdown. But uh, it is family. It is family, and we enjoy each other. And as a family, uh, we don't always get along. We, we disagree on some things, but we agree to disagree and still love and respect one another. And that's what family is all about. And these are just a few of the reasons why I love this church. Thank you. Thank you, Glenn. And as you all know, the Greater United Methodist Church in our denomination, we are walking in very, very challenging time on the issue of human sexuality. And I truly believe that in this difficult time, we have to remember who we are as a body of Christ. And what is our mission? What is the great commission our Lord has given us? And therefore, in this challenging time, let us clothe ourselves with patience, kindness, and gentleness, but most of all, the Spirit of Christ, so that, so that we may continue to press on to be the church, making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Today, tomorrow, and until Jesus comes back. Amen? Amen. Now please join me in the musical preparation as we sing, As the Deer, the faith we sing 2025. We, you, you, you may remain seated. Jesus gave himself up for us. He took bread, gave thanks to you, and broke the bread. And gave it to his disciples and said, Take it. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup gave thanks to you, and gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So this morning we remember our Lord Jesus Christ and his love, his death, and his resurrection. And we also remember who we are as a body of Christ, as we remember our mission to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. 
So let us remember our mission and our Lord as we receive the body of Christ and blood of Christ. Now let me invite communion servers to come forward.
Now this is time to share our joys and concerns together as faith community and continued prayers for those who are struggling with their health issues. And again, um, gratitude for the privilege and uh, lots of wonderful things that we enjoy in this nation. And our gratitude for those who served this country and gave their lives for liberty and freedom. Anyone else? And good to see you, Ellie. And thank you for Philly for wonderful music. I would like a prayer for my sister-in-law, who used to be my classmate. She married my brother. She was widowed very early in life, and she just spent her time raising her children. Mm. And then she met my brother a couple of years after his wife died. His wife was her cousin. My sister-in-law is about my age, very close, and she now has cancer of, in the upper part of her spine, which is really wrecking her time. So I, I would like prayers for Gladys and in memory of the good times that we used to have together. Amen. Also prayers for you too, for God's peace in your heart. Yes. Ginger? I think we can sit here every Sunday morning and pray for someone who's being affected by a natural disaster. And so we do so again today with uh, earthquakes in California, um, all of the weather. I think of the farmers and the issues they're facing because of the the wet weather, and even simple things. I got a text from my brother in Texas last night at 10 o'clock at night who lives in the desert of West Texas, and they were getting torrential rain, which has no place to go, and big hail, and so all those little storms all over the country. Just pray for people who are in situations over which they have no control. Amen. Glenn? I have a, <clears throat> I have a joy. Uh, a few months ago, I shared that uh, a family friend got run over by a car, <clears throat> and he was actually in a coma for a long time. Uh, and he's been in uh, rehab for months. Daughter Jill called last night and said his, his name is Dave Arcopane, that Dave was driving up to see them this weekend. It's an amazing recovery. That's wonderful. Praise God. Anyone else? I would ask for some prayers for our extended family. Uh, I lost a cousin yesterday unexpectedly. He was 49. Oh. oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Prayers for the family as they walk in the valley of the shadow of death and most of all God's peace in their hearts. Now let us pray together silently and as the Holy Spirit prays with us with deep sighs that word cannot express. Oh, Father God, we are so grateful for the blessings of liberty in this nation and all those who have bravely given their lives in the defense of justice and freedom. God, we thank you for the beauty of this land for spacious skies, 
or amber wave of grain, as we just sang this morning. Oh, Father God, as we look around, what's going on in our nation today, we have to confess that we have far gone astray to worship other gods of mammon or self-sufficiency. Have mercy on us, O oh God, and Holy Spirit, soften our stiff neck and hardened heart this morning and help us to rediscover and renew our faith to be the people you intend us to be. And we also this morning, O oh God, lift up those who are walking through the valley of the shadow of death very, very sudden. Lord, we don't pretend to understand why that happens, but we do know that you will be with them and Holy Spirit is praying with them with deep sighs that world cannot express. And you know exactly what they are going through right now. So give your comfort, O oh God, and your peace that passes all human understanding so that somehow they may feel your presence very, very real. And we pray this in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ our Lord, who also taught us this prayer saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We have uh, some announcements living our faith, many of which are in the white section of your uh, bulletin. Uh, the walking club starts today, <clears throat> and that'll be at the Mequon Nature Preserve on County Line Road at 4 o'clock. Uh, Marsh Meadow Cleanup Day is July 13th. You can use lots of people, because the more people we have, the quicker it gets done. Our youth are on a mission trip starting this Friday and through July 20th. Prayers for them and their leaders would be appreciated. Um, today is Golden Cross Sunday. 100% of your Golden Cross offering is used to support persons who are unable to pay for the services received. And your gifts, prayers, and volunteer services are very important to our health and welfare ministries. We're having a food sort on July 27th for the Hunger Task Force from 9 a.m. to noon. And we are collecting food, so please bring your uh, food, healthy food. They're making a big emphasis on healthy food. No ramen noodles, no... Uh, sugar snap cereals and all that sort of thing uh, because they are getting rid of that. They're not distributing it even if it's donated. So please, healthy foods, please. Um, I guess that's it. Does, oh, uh, meal site is at the end of this, this month on, uh, we do, we have two meal sites this month. So the sign up sheets are down Okay, they'll be put up this week, so be sure and sign up. Does anybody else have anything else? There's no blood pressure checks today. Thank you. 
Oh, Heavenly Father, we give because we love you. We give because we are grateful. So with a grateful heart, we have brought our offering to you this morning. Bless it, O oh God, so that it may be used for this church to become a strong ark of salvation in this community and beyond. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now please join me in our closing hymn, Eternal Father, Strong to Save. receive the benediction, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>